Good morning. It's the Drive to School podcast. I'm Pastor Goodman, the content executive of Higher Things, and Michelle Bauman, the director of Why for Life, is back with us today. How are you doing today? Good. Good morning. It is good to be with you. So thrilled to have you. So um, I, I really love every time we get to sit down uh, because I, I get to learn just more of, of how broad the, the life movement actually is, um, <laughs> that there, there's so much going on. Um, and uh, it, it's always just sort of a, a unique perspective and, and a wonderful gospel driven voice. So thanks again for joining us. Uh, what are we going to talk about today? Let's talk about justice. Let's talk about the role that justice has uh, in in life work and in, in affirming life. Do you want me to start? Do you want to start? Yeah, what, what's so, justice? Like, how do we, how do yeah. we answer it? That's, that's yeah, I, so. I can sort of say like, somebody hurting because I'm mad is sort of that, that gut answer I have, but that, I don't know if that covers it. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, when we talk about, obviously, justice and the idea of justice has come up a lot in the life movement and, and particularly very recently uh, with Justice for the Five, that movement. And so, yeah, there's this sense of anger, this sense of desire for justice for lives and those sorts of things. And as Christians, uh, we know that true justice comes from God himself. And true justice is carried out by Christ's death and resurrection, by his death on the cross and by his resurrection and what he earns for us then. Uh, he pays that. He pays uh, the consequences of our sins. And so he, he is the emblem. He is the answer to justice. But just we fire, also, yeah. what'd you say? The justifier. Yeah, exactly. He is the justifier. And so, um, but we also recognize that in today's world, there, aside from Christ, there is no perfect justice, right? Because we live in, in a world of sin. Um, but we do recognize that God has um, designed areas to help carry out that justice. And that justice is meant to affirm and uphold lives. Uh, it is there to do that, uh, to provide, um, whether it is life-saving opportunities or um, to, to um, right wrongs, right? Um, so when we're talking about those life-affirming, um, justice-giving opportunities or, or um, I guess, like, what, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Institutions that God has created. Um, we're looking at the family, obvious, for one of those, but also for the government. And I think it's important as Christians that we remember um, and as for life people that we remember that God is at work in the government and we, we can and should uphold the work that they're doing. Now, obviously, if, if the government is not uh, protecting the innocent, if the government is not upholding lives that cannot uphold themselves, then we as Christians need to speak and remind the government of their task. This is what, what uh, you know, God instituted them for um, to, to uphold lives. Um, but we can rest assured that God does work through the government and pray that God would uh, work for the government to sustain and to uphold justice. Right. That's a really important point because it, it's so easy to sort of get caught up in the, the polarity of the political landscape today and say, well, I didn't vote for you. So clearly God ha hates you and can do nothing until the guy I did vote for gets elected somehow. Uh, but then the Bible is filled with stories of people who very clearly were not just sort of sinners, but just unbelievers who God continued to work through. Uh, you have Herod accomplishing God's will, Pilate accomplishing God's will. You can even go to the high priest Caiaphas who preached the perfect sermon while he didn't believe in it. It is better that one man should die yes. for the sake of the people. Um, it, it gives us a chance then to talk about the issue itself instead of the particular person. And, and that I think is, is maybe a helpful thing. Yeah, absolutely. And when we talk about the issues, you know, when we talk about, um, you know, babies that, that are dying in particular, this one with justice for the five, we can say uh, in all confidence that, that that is wrong, right? And that we, we want uh, the law to protect those lives. And in this case, it seems that there are some lives that were, uh, were ended in, according to the government, an, unlegal, or an illegal way, right? And so in those cases, we do want to use our voice. We do want to say um, justice needs to be upheld. Uh, and, and those lives need to be affirmed as, as um, important, that something very bad, very evil had been done to them. And, um, and it's okay to, to seek that justice. So, um, but we, of course, we aren't vigilantes either, right? So it's not up to us 
to seek that justice through angry posts or through attacks on other individuals. Um, we, we rest assured that God has promised to work through the government, has promised to work through uh, the, the means which he provides and that he will do so. Um, and so we, we wait that, we wait that with prayer. That's so. a really important point too. I, I remember reading in the large catechism under the eighth commandment, the you shall not bear false testimony against your neighbor commandment, uh, that Luther actually talks a little bit about one of the reasons we love to, to use our words in such a negative way towards each other or you know, post on social media, which I'm sure is what he had on mind at the time, um, but kind of counts, uh, <laughs> is that when we use our words this way, we recognize that the old adage is not true, that, that sticks and stones may break your bones, but words can still do a lot of damage. And one of the things that we grab hold of then when we make our angry posts is that we want to punish somebody by our words because the places given are not satisfactory to us, that we want to take unto ourselves the justice of God and do a better job than the institutions that he's instituted. And so we'll, we'll run our mouths in ways that are not helpful, uh, that are not, not, not only not kind. And it's one of those things where it might be true, but it's, it's absolutely not the best construction and it's absolutely not geared towards actually fixing the issue so much as making yourself feel better about it. Right, exactly. And when we when we try to be gospel motivated motivated voices, we we you know when we put something out on social media, there is no telling who is going to read that, right? So our friends can read that, but anyone can take a picture of that post and repost it and use it for their for their desires, their means, those sorts of things. And and because we don't know um, who our audience is, we have to be very careful about how we speak. Um, and what we post and what images we post, you know, so in general with Y for Life, we try not to post picture, pictures of aborted victims um, because again, um, when we are trying to engage in conversation, when we're trying to engage in, in for life conversation, um, those pictures very often are conversation enders, right? They do not begin a conversation. They begin an argument. They're inflammatory um, and, 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 for a woman who has experienced an ab abortion and is, and is feeling that guilt, um, the shame. The, yeah, the guilt, the shame, the questioning whether or not she has been forgiven, um, those images just affirm um, the, 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 the shame and the, the, the feeling that she has done something atrocious, right? Unforgivable. And, um, and so as we, we depend on God, uh, to provide that justice. We also depend on God to provide that forgiveness. And, and if we are going to be um, voices for one or the other, we want to be that gospel motivated voice, that voice that, that heals, that voice that uh, depends on, on, um, on, on forgiveness, right? And offers that forgiveness. Um, so we, we want to be real careful. We want to, again, promote that justice, talk about how God, God, um, is a just God and that God will take care of those things and depend on him to do it. And in the meantime, we are going to provide that, that balm of grace, right? As right. we speak about life issues. There's such a difference between trying to help and trying to win. And this is how we, we want to approach that, that anybody that we're coming across, we actually do want to help. Um, if it's about winning, it's about you. If it's about helping, it's about them. And what we have here is simply in the fact that we're talking about a, a, a life cause is that we're worried about the life of our neighbor. And so helping should be the thing that that's driving us. And that lets us talk about, like you said, justice in the place where we have justification, where we have Christ who comes covered sins of the world with the blood shed for you, for me, for all. And that doesn't make right and wrong meld into the same thing. It doesn't need to, though. It lets us talk about it, though, as if there's forgiveness for it. And, and again, this is this is a, a sensitive thing. And so we can't sort of paint in broad brushes and say this is always the, the, the right answer for this particular thing. But it does let us talk about justice as if there is a God who works also mercy and, and works the mercy from the same place he works the justice. That's the cross. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, as we, we look to God's work through the government and look to God's work through his people, um, that provides motivation for us to get involved as well. Uh, we need Christian voices um, in government. We need Christians to be police officers and to be lawyers and to be, um, you know, the people working behind the scenes and the people working uh, in politics to affirm life. 
Um, and so, you know, I, I just, with my, with my youth and, and with those that are listening today, I would encourage you uh, to be involved, not just as voters, but to be involved as, as Christians who get to carry a message into, uh, into the world in a very unique way. Um, and, and possibly even in professionally, um, in, in a service way, a, a way to serve government as a whole and, and our nation as a whole. Um, I would love to vote for you someday. <laughs> that's, a great, that's a great way to put it. I, and that, that also shapes our behavior now going forward, because I mean, there, I, I know that Y for Life is, is sort of under the Lutherans for Life wing, but we're, we're talking to a demographic that, that doesn't necessarily have all of the same agency that the right. adults do. But if, if they're looking forward to something, uh, social media being what it is, if you run for office, we're going to check. Uh, <laughs> that's right. So, uh, speak as if, if you're helping for this right now. And, and that's a gift. Absolutely. Wow. That's really good. Anything else you kind of like to touch base on as far as justice? Well, I think, you know, again, just, just, just that concept, that idea that justice, um, justice is God's right. And justice is, um, you know, carried out by God. We, we, you know, as we are employed as citizens, um, have an opportunity or a, a purpose, but we don't want to overstep those bounds for sure. Um, but that that justice can be something that that we hope for in eternity as well. Um, it's not just for this world, um, but we know that in the end, um, true justice um, is, is carried out, um, and we have hope. We have hope for a future, um, a better future, uh, as we you know as we uphold lives. We're not just upholding them for this world, but also for eternity. Uh, And that eternity is going to be a a place of perfect justice and perfect love. Um, And so we have that hope to offer as well. That's outstanding. Thank you so much. Michelle, where can we kind of find more of your stuff if, if, if if we're interested? Yeah, well, we'd love to have you follow us at LFL Y for Life. Uh, on Instagram. And um, also we have Youth for Life podcasts. Um, So definitely check us out. We have over 25 podcasts that have been uh, already uploaded um, for your, for your learning pleasure. So we would love to have you. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you.